Adam Reeplesbox here, and it's been requested quite a few times that I do tutorials on basic computer upgrades and repair. So today I want to walk you through the basics of upgrading to a new CPU cooler. For this tutorial, I will be upgrading an AMD FM2 socket processor. This process is going to be the same for all recent AMD processors, but the process will be a little different for Intel CPUs, and I will do my best to illustrate what would be done on an Intel CPU along the way, but the exact imagery won't be there simply because I'm not using an Intel CPU. For this project, you will need a desktop computer with an upgradable stock cooler, a decent sized case, some thermal compound, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a new CPU cooler that you wish to upgrade to. Here I'm using a Deepcool Gamax 400 CPU cooler, which is a universal cooler that works with both Intel and AMD sockets of most socket types. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this cooler, it was just simply a cheap Newegg deal that I ran across. This cooler features two small heat pipes and one medium sized one and comes with a 120mm fan with a blue LED on it. The fan claims to be silent, but if you're really going for a quiet build, I definitely recommend swapping that fan for a Noctua NF F12 fan instead. All the required various mounting hardware comes in the box as well, except for the backplate which should still be attached to your motherboard. One thing to note about this cooler specifically, it's quite tall. With any CPU cooler purchase, make sure you have enough clearance in your case to fit the cooler. Not all coolers will fit in all cases, this one just barely fits in this case. The first step is to take off the side panel of your case, exposing your motherboard, graphics card, etc. Find your CPU cooler. Remove the cooler fan plug from the header on the motherboard. This will vary per motherboard, but it would be somewhere around here. If you have an AMD CPU, you need to look for the little clip on the side of the cooler as you see here. If you have an Intel CPU, however, you will need to unscrew the four Phillips head screws in the four corners of the cooler that will be approximately here, 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 and here. On the AMD side, flip that switch or clamp to undo the clip of the cooler and pull off the cooler. There is a bracket that runs through the middle of the cooler and grabs on the two sides of the mounting hardware on the actual motherboard, so you may have to slide this off manually. Be careful not to damage anything on your motherboard while feeling around trying to find the bracket. If you're on Intel, simply unscreen the screws and pulling out the cooler should be all you need to do. Next, you need to clean the thermal compound off your processor. You can buy a special liquid compound for this or just use rubbing alcohol. Make sure you to use a microfiber cloth for this process. If you end up using a paper towel like I did, make absolutely sure you, you leave no fibers or paper bits behind. This will cause some serious problems down the road. Carefully clean off the thermal compound and let it dry. You should go on and do this for the old cooler as well to make storing it less messy. I was in a rush however so I just threw it in a Ziploc bag. I'll probably never use the old one again but I saved it just in case this cooler didn't work. That's probably a good idea for you to do as well. Next, you need to check your new cooler. On the bottom of the heat pipes or on the heat sink where it makes contact with the processor, check to see if the new cooler comes with thermal compound pre-applied. This would be a gray or dark gray square coating the center of the heat sink. If so, you can proceed to installation. If not, you will first need to apply some thermal compound to your CPU. I'm using some Noctua thermal compound that I had with me, but I would actually recommend some Arctic Silver compound instead. Simply put a small line or a small circle, there are different preferred styles and methods, diagonally across the CPU and make sure to not touch it. Next, we need to attach the CPU cooler. If you're using a universal cooler like I am, you will need to attach the proper mounting hardware for your CPU socket to the cooler before proceeding. This will vary based on the cooler and the CPU socket you're using. The manual that came with your cooler should be sufficient, sufficient explanation to figure this step out. Next, hover the cooler above the CPU socket and line up the mounting bracket or hardware with the appropriate attachment spot on your motherboard. For AMD CPUs, we will be using a similar clamping system to the stock cooler. For Intel, you will be screwing in the four corners in most cases. It is important to keep the cooler hovering above the CPU as much as possible during this initial lining up and adjustment process as to not screw up the thermal compound. Moving around on top of the thermal compound and removing the cooler then replacing it again after the compound has already been applied risks leaving air bubbles and uncovered parts of the CPU which can cause cooling problems in hotter CPUs, thus defeating the purpose of upgrading. Line up the bracket above the clamping spots and slide the side without the clamp switch over the bracket on the motherboard. Then, pressing down enough to reach but not too hard as to damage the CPU or motherboard, bring the other side of the clamp over the mounting point and flip the switch. The cooler is now attached. This is a bit hard to word specifically, but when you 
took off the old cooler, you should see exactly what you need to do. For Intel sim CPUs, simply press the cooler onto the CPU and screw in the four screws, starting with opposite corners, making sure to apply even pressure to the compound. The cooler is now attached. All we need to do now is attach and connect the fan. The cooler may have had a fan pre-attached to the cooler, in which case you can connect the fan plug to the CPU underscore fan header on your motherboard and be finished. However, on most upgrade coolers, the fan will have to be attached next. This cooler uses two small brackets to hold the fan on top of the heatsink. Check the airflow arrows on your fan. It's, one of the, it's on one of the sidewalls of the fan on the outer edge. Make sure it's pointing in the correct direction. For most cases, including this one, we want air pushing from the front of the case through the heatsink and exhausting out of the back of the case. So I will hook the brackets into the fan and attach it to the cooler appropriately. If you have a different airflow setup, you will need to put the fan facing the right direction for your setup. It is always a good idea to make sure you're pushing air through the heatsink instead of pulling. Lastly, plug the fan into the CPU fan header on the motherboard, secure the cable out of the way of the fan and other components, and put your case back together. That's it! You'll want to make sure you turn it on and make sure it works, make sure the fan spins, and run a couple tests to make sure it doesn't overheat, but that's really it. There's quite a few steps, but overall it's not a hugely complicated process. If you screw up the thermal compound too much during this process, it's probably a good idea to remove it and start over. However, if you just barely nudge it, then you probably won't be too bad off just to go on and attach it and make sure it doesn't overheat. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this kind of format in the comments down below. Be sure to check the description for product links and links to our Patreon campaign where you can support us via a monthly contribution, social media links, etc. Otherwise guys, my name's been Adam or Vox, and I will catch you in a future video.